Welcome to lesson 6.4. We're going to be learning a very interesting formula today. And instead of just giving you the formula like I normally do, I'm just actually going to explain how to get a formula. Whoa, you hyped? Because I am. So bring your attention over here to where it says trigonometric cofunctions. All right? Trigonometric cofunctions is basically, this is our definition of that. And this will make no sense. Let me be clear. This sentence will make no sense. The sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of its complement. That made no sense to you. Let's break it down. First, we see this word here that says complement. That means basically that two angles that add up to 90 degrees. And you might remember from class, we discussed that angle A and angle B are complements to each other. The reason I know that is because this is a triangle. And if this angle is 90, then angle A and B also have to add up to 90, 90 so these all add up to 180. So let's Let's see, right? So if this was 30, this would have to be 60 because 30 plus 60 plus 90 equals 180. So A and B add up to 90 every single time, all right? It always has to be that way. Um, so yeah, let's just put down a little note then. So we know that angle A plus angle B equal 90 degrees always. These two angles that aren't 90 always add up to 90. Now, check this out. Now that I know A and B are always add up to 90, here's what I'm going to show you. All right, we're going to find the sine of A and the cosine of B, and something cool is going to happen. Watch. First, let's find the sine of A. So that means we start at A. We're going to look, label our sides. We got opposite. We got our hypotenuse, and we got our adjacent. So if we wanted to find the sine of A, that would be the opposite of our hypotenuse. So that is 12 over 13. All right, this is just like 6.1. I'm just showing that the sine of A is 12 over 13. Now check this out, all right? Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find out the cosine of B. So we start here at B, okay? And we're gonna label our sides. That's O, that's A, and that's H, okay? And if we do this now, let's find the cosine of B that is adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 12 over 13. <gasps> Look at that! They're equal to each other, ain't that cool? So here's my key fact, and this is the formula that we're gonna be using today. We know that sine of A is equal to the cosine of B. And I'm just gonna put a little star here. That's if A and B are complements. All right, that's our fact. So, but this is the formula you need to know today. Sine of A equals cosine of B, and these two numbers will always add up to 90 degrees. All right? And that's, that's it. So we're gonna solve some problems based on these facts. So let, let's get into it. Let's, let's do a little problem solving right now, okay? So over here, it says, if sine of 49 is equal to the cosine of x, find the value of x that would make this statement true. Now remember, if I were to draw out this triangle, you don't have to do this, you should just know how to solve it. But if I draw out this triangle, okay? I know that the sine of 49 will have to be equal to this angle, the cosine of this angle, all right? So there's an easy way to solve this. You can use the triangle sum theorem here, which would just be 90 minus 180 minus 90 minus 49, which gives us 41. But the easy way to solve this, all right, that's the hard way to do it, is just this. If you wanna find out what x is, you just do 49 plus x always equal 90 degrees. We know that these two angles will always add up to 90. So we're gonna solve for x by subtracting 49 on both sides. All right, and we get x is equal to 41. All right, so if you ever wanna find out what would make sine of a number equal to the cosine of the number, of the number, you just subtract 90 from that number. So 90 minus 49, we get 41. Let's try the next one. If A and B are complementary angles, and sine of A equals three over five, what's the cosine of B? Now, this is what we know. I'm gonna show you an easy way to do it, and then I'll show you the hard way to do it. But let's start with the easy way. A and B are complementary angles, okay? So let's check over here. And sine of A equals three over five, what's cosine of B? Well, here's our formula. We know the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B if A and B are complementary, which they are. So if the sine of A is three over five, the cosine of B is equal to three over five. Oh, <gasps> see how easy that problem was? 
the sine of A is always equal to the cosine of B. Now, the hard way to do that problem, and I don't recommend doing it this way, is that we can just draw a triangle, all right? So this is our 90 degree, we'll call that C. Here's our A, and here's our B. So the sine of A is three over five. That means the opposite side's three, and the adjacent, the hypotenuse is five. So now you'd find the cosine of B. So if the cosine of B, remember this is opposite, this is our adjacent, this is our hypotenuse, the cosine of B is three over five. But that was so much work. You could just use this simple formula to solve it up. So solve sine of A is equal cosine of B. Duh, they're the same thing. What a fancy looking question. Now this last part is actually, it's not an equation we're gonna solve. It's just something that you should know, okay? We can rewrite our formula we just used, that sine of A equals cosine of B. We're gonna rewrite this formula so we could have two formulas now, all right? It's gonna be the same way of saying the same thing, we're just gonna learn another formula. So we know, remember, that sine A equals cosine B, all right? And we know that angle A plus angle B is equal to 90 degrees. Another way of calling angle B, all right, would be to say, well, if I subtract A from both sides, angle A, I could say angle B is equal to 90 minus angle A. And we learned that, right? We just subtract angle A to get angle B. 90 minus angle A equals angle B. So that's what we have here. So another way of saying the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B would be to say the sine of A is equal to the cosine of, and we'll replace B with what we learned right here, with 90 minus A. Same formula, all right? It's just another way of stating it. The sine of A is, one, is equal to the cosine of B. The sine of A is equal to the cosine of B is one way of saying it. That's one formula that we know. Another way of saying B, though, is to say the sine of A is equal to the cosine of 90 minus A. All right, that's the formula you have to memorize. So put a little note to yourself, just memorize these formulas. So I know these formulas look tough, but we're gonna just do four application problems and hopefully that shows you that this really isn't so hard, okay? We're just gonna go back and use these formulas. So let's try some, some of these, okay? We're gonna try a little bit of work here. First one, if cosine of 72 is equal to the sine of x, find the number of degrees in the measure of acute angle x, okay? We're just gonna find out how much are in angle x. So what we do is this. We know that angle A plus angle B have to be equal to 90, all right? We know the first angle is 72. We know the second angle is X, and that's gonna be equal to 90. So we just subtract 72 from both sides. We get X is equal to 18 degrees. So that's all I had to do. So now if you added these two up, 18 plus 72, we get 90. The cosine of 72 is equal to the sine of 18. And these two angles add up to 90. They're complementary, so we're happy. All right, that's one application of this. The second one is this guy. Okay, for so in triangle ABC, where angle C is a right angle, cosine A is equal to square root 21 over five. What is the sine of B? Well, once again, all right, we're just gonna use our formula. The sine of A is equal to the cosine of B. And to be honest, you could rewrite this as the sine of B equals the cosine of A. A and B, it doesn't matter which way you put it, it's the same formula either way, okay? So if the cosine of A is square root 21 over five, guess what the sine of B is? The sine of B is equal to the same exact thing, okay? So square root 21 over five. They're equal to each other. Wow, right? Because if they're equal to each other, if the cosine of A is square root 21 over five, sine of B has to be the same exact thing. Durr. Okay, next one. Which value of X satisfies the equation sine three X plus five is equal to cosine four X plus one? Look, well, that's the same thing. What we're gonna say is this, angle A plus angle B are gonna be 90 degrees, right? They're complementary for this to be true. Angle A, in this case, is equal to 3x plus 5 plus, and angle B, in this case, is 4x plus 1. 
and those add up to make 90 degrees. So now you gotta do some algebra. I think you can handle it. We're just gonna add the like terms. We see that 3x and 4x are like terms, so we get 7x. All right, and then we see that five and one are like terms, so let's add those guys together too. Solve this equation. Oh, we gotta do some algebra now. I think we can handle it. We get seven X is equal to 84. Divide both sides by seven. And we get X is equal to 12. That's it. And if you plug that in, you'll see that they equal each other. You know, let's take a minute to do that. So the sine of three times 12 plus five is equal to the cosine of four times 12 plus one. If you do this, you get the sine of 36 plus five equals the cosine of 48 plus one. Let's see, so that's the sine of 41 is equal to the cosine of 49. Or you did a problem like that. Since 49 plus 41 equal 90, sure enough, this worked out. So x does equal 12. And now the last one, okay? Pay attention closely so you don't get confused on this. In right triangle ABC, we're where right angle is at C, the sine of A is equal to 2x plus zero, 1, and the cosine of B is equal to 4x minus 0. 0.7. Determine and state the value of x. Explain your answer. Now, here's the deal for this one. You might remember here that this is the sine of, and instead of writing A, they gave us 3x plus 5, and the cosine, instead of writing B, they wrote in this. This is a little different. They said the sine of A is equal to something. They told us what it's equal to. So this question is actually a lot more like this guy up here, and I'll show you how. So to do this problem, I'm gonna write out this. The sine of A is equal to the cosine of B. Now the sine of A is actually given to us. I can replace that with 2x plus 0.1. And the cosine of B is actually given to us as well over here. So I could say cosine of B is equal to 4x minus 0.7. See what I did there? I actually just replaced sine of A with their values. So now we just set them equally to each other and we're gonna solve this equation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract 0.1 from both sides. Okay, and I cancel that out. I get 2x is equal to 4x minus 0.8. We're gonna subtract 4x from both sides. And I get negative 2x is equal to negative 0.8. Divide both sides by negative two. All right, and you just put that into your calculator. So take out a calculator, put point, negative point 0.8 divided by negative two. And you should get x is equal to point 0.4. And it says explain your answer. Well, this is the explanation. We know sine A equals cosine B, so we can just set them equal to each other. So that's it for this lesson. This is my recommendation. If you want to be good at this, just remember all your independent practice problems are going to come back to one of these four problems. If you could do with these four problems, you're going to be G to G, which means good to go. All right, that's it for level six. Good job. Beans.